I'm in my AWS console. To create a code deployment application, go to code deploy. And when you go to the code deploy, select the application section and then click create application. Give a name, something like my donkey app test. And the compute platform is going to be EC2 or on premises because we are going to target EC2 instance to deploy this application. So we select this compute platform, EC2 or on premise environments and then click create application. This will take you to the deployment group section. Uh, alternatively, you can select the application. And if you have multiple applications, select the application that you want and then select the deployment groups. Before we create a deployment group, we need to have a role that allows code deploy to access AWS resources. So we first need to create a role that grant that permission. To do that, go to IAM section. And in the identity access management roles, uh, go to create role. And here you need to create a role for code deploy. So you can find that there is a, a section for code deploy. Oh yeah. So it's going to be a code deploy uh, role. So I select a code deploy. And in the code deploy, you need to select allow code deploy to call AWS searches, uh, services such as auto scaling on your behalf. So we need to select this option and then click next permission. So keep the default one, AWS code deploy role. Uh, this role allows uh, deployment of, uh, allow code deploy to access certain AWS services. You can find them uh, for example, get tags, EC2 uh, sections. So keep it as default and then click next add tags. Click review and give it a name. Uh, you can call it uh, my something like my uh, code deploy role. So far so good. And then click create role. So I have my code deploy role uh, which trust AWS service code deploy. So let's go into code deploy again and then create a deployment group. Go to services, code deploy, and select the application that you created on the application tab. And in the deployment group, we are going to create a new deployment group. So let's give it a name. Let's give it a name like uh, pre-production environment. And what's the service role? The service role is the one that we just created, in this case, my code deploy role. And choose how to deploy your application. In this, it's going to be an in-place deployment. Uh, we are not going to do a blue-green deployment. And environment configuration. So what are the environment that I'm targeting? In this case, I'm going to target Amazon EC2 instances. And I can select instances based on uh, tags given for my EC2 instances. So I have one called name tag. And the name uh, in this case is going to be due machine. How do I know that? So for example, if I go into my EC2 section, under EC2 section, you can find that I have two running instances. And one of that one is due machine where the tag name equals due machine. I can uh, target it based on a custom uh, tag if I want. For example, I could say uh, environment equals uh, pre prod. So oh, let's target with this new parameter environment equals pre prod. Click save. And if I go into my uh, previous section, I can say environment uh, value equals pre-prod. So that will select those instances. So if you want to select multiple instances, for example, if I want to uh, make these two machines uh, belong into pre-production environment, I can give the build machine also 
a tag called environment equals uh, preprod. For the moment, I'm not going to define for the build machine. Let's deploy only to the development machine where the environment we set it up as preprod. So all looks good. Uh, we will not discuss on-premise instances at the moment. Uh, how do I want to deploy? Uh, I want to deploy with the all at once, one at a time. So let's select one at a time. Uh, are there any load balancers? This is a very simple EXE application, so it doesn't need to be a load balancer and then click Create Deployment Group. So I have a deployment group that I created, and the target for that one is any EC2 instances where there's a key called environment equals to preprod. Uh, all looks good. And the next step is to create a deployment. So go to your applications. As of now, I have a pre-production environment for this application. I can have, for example, development environment, production environment, um, as a set of uh, EC2 instances that targets for that. And go for deployments. We are going to deploy our simple uh, zip file into these uh, machines. So go to deployments. Click Create Deployment. So the deployment group I want to target is pre-production. This is what I just created a moment ago. And it's going to be, uh, my content for this deployment is going to come from S3 bucket. So I need to provide the S3 bucket. So where's my S3 bucket? It's where I copied that zip file. So if I go into S3, uh, open it in a new tab maybe. I have my uh, build artifacts, uh, my donkey deliveries. So this is the zip file I uh, want to deliver. So let's first deliver this zip file and then try to figure it out how to automatically deploy with the uh, uh, Azure DevOps server. So let's first deploy this simple uh, exe application, simple uh, .NET application. So uh, open this, uh, the URL is this one, the zip file, copy it, link address. And if you go into the AWS code deploy, uh, I'm in the process of creating my uh, deployment. It's going to be a pre-production environment. Uh, my application is stored in Amazon S3 and you need to give the S3 location. When you are giving the S3 location, you need to follow the special uh, ARM path, which in this case is going to be S3 forward slash name of the bucket, my build artifact, and the name of the uh, fault is my uh, donkey app deliveries and the zip file uh, name. And mind you that I'm in the Sydney region, in the same region that I have this bucket. So it's going to be a zip file. All looks good. And then click Create Deployment. So you can find that the deployment is uh, in progress. So if I go into the deployments, you can find that the deploy deployment is in running condition. So if you select that, it says overall deployment failed because too many individual instance failed deployment. The reason for this failure is coming from the fact that my uh, the target instance does not have access to S3. You can find that uh, if I go into deployments uh, and then uh, select this failed deployment, which in this case, the target instance is correctly selected as one of my development machine. So this due machine that I have in the IAM section, IAM role, it doesn't have S3 access. So let's give it an S3 access. Because when it try to download that uh, package in the zip file, it cannot access S3. So attach a policy. You may already have attached this policy uh, before in the previous lab, but if you haven't, make sure that you access Amazon S3 full access. You can give only Amazon S3 read-only access. Uh, alternatively, you can give a fine-grained control that allows only access to the specific folder in S3. So in this case, uh, I will give something like Amazon uh, S3 read-only access, and then click Attach Policy. So far, so good. So now do the deployment again, and then check whether it will succeed, fully deploy. 
So let's go to the deployments. And we can select the existing deployment, and then we can copy the deployment. So we know that it's going to be uh, application deployment gap test, deployment groups is pre-production, it's going to come from the S3, you already know this location, previously it failed because it didn't have access to this uh, file. Uh, we attach the Amazon S3 read-only access. So let's create the deployment again and then see what happens. So before we click create deployment, mind you in your uh, development machine, uh, there's no any uh, temp folder. Uh, and uh, even if you have one, uh, make sure that uh, it's deleted so that you can observe how this uh, temp folder get created and the application get uh, copied. So let's uh, create this deployment. So the deployment is running. If you go into the deployments, you can find the new deployment is in progress. So it's now executing this uh, deployment uh, package one at a time. So it's uh, successful. And if you go into uh, your development machine where we target it, you can find that a temp fold has been created and it copied uh, something called my donkey app. And you have the assets uh, over here. So if you go into your application, you can find that the deployment has been successful. You can also go into uh, this uh, different instance it deployed, in this case only one instance, and the view events. And here you can find uh, application stop was successful, bundle before installation was successful, uh, after installation was successful, validate service, they all got successfully executed. If you go into your development machine, you can find that this, uh, we, as part of the execution, we execute some PowerShell scripts. And one of those PowerShell scripts is going to generate a file called my PowerShell gen file. And it says hello world from PowerShell. And that's how it got executed. So which means that uh, these uh, before install, after install scripts got executed uh, carefully. So that hello world message came from this one. Uh, if you open it, it, for example, Notepad, you can see that uh, it write a content into a file called my PowerShell gen file. So this deployment was successful. Your target instance, like for example, this development machine, has to have AWS Code Deploy Agent running behind the scene. And if you go to Services, and then search Code Deploy, you can find that there is a service called Code Deploy Host Agent Service which is running behind the scene. Sometimes you will find that uh, if, you, if the service is not running, your Code Deployment uh, is going to fail. So make sure that this uh, uh, service is always running. Uh, if you open it, you can find that uh, the service run in local system account. And the program for that one is installed in this location. So if you go select this uh, folder, and then go to this uh, C program data Amazon code deploy. So this is a hidden folder. So if you go into your C drive, you will not find it. But if you type uh, program data, you can find there's a folder called Amazon. And inside that there's one called code deploy. And this is very interesting because you can find that there's a log file. And this log file becomes very useful when you want to debug certain issues. So for example, if the code deploy cannot connect into uh, AWS for some security issues, uh, you can find this uh, log information. Uh, so this log file is a very useful one when you want to find the debug issues related to code deploy. You can also find that uh, this uh, code deploy location is the one that uh, this uses to download a certain artifact. So for example, if you explore these uh, special GUIDs over here, you can find that it corresponds to certain deployments we did. And you can find that the deployment archive that it downloaded along with some log files that it created. EC2 instance by default doesn't come with uh, AWS Core Deploy Agent installed. But if you want to know how to install it, uh, documentation is given on Amazon uh, Core Deploy section, where I'd explain how to download the uh, AWS Core Deploy and then install it on EC2 instances.
if I want to target more instance than one EC2 instance that I deployed, I can still do that. If you go into code deploy section, you can find that my donkey app test has a deployment group called pre-production and the pre-production select instance based on environment uh, key equals to uh, pre-production. So as long as you have EC2 instance with a tag uh, ENV, which, uh, whose value is equal to pre-production, that instance will get selected. So if I go into my management console, let's add another instance. So let's go to EC2 instances. I have two uh, EC2 instances right now, the build machine. This build machine has already, uh, I have installed the uh, code deploy agent, uh, how to install code deploy. If you don't know how to install it, go through the documentation, how to install the uh, code deploy on these machines. And of course, I need to again add the IAM role to make sure that it has the S3 access. So if I go into the IAM uh, section, uh, I attach the policy. Uh, in this case, you can define fine grain policy. In this case, I'm just going to give Amazon S3 read only access. That's good. So this build machine now has uh, the permission to read from the Amazon S3 so that it can download the zip file. Uh, and on top of that, I need to make sure that it has a tag that identify it as uh, environment equals uh, pre-prod. So click save. So I have now two environments. They both have uh, Amazon S3 access uh, through Amazon S3 read only access that I gave. They both have code deploy agent installed. So you should be able to uh, access and then download that file and then install it. So let's run another code deployment. So select code deployment. So select my donkey app test. Uh, you can select pre-production deployment. You can create a deployment. It's going to be a pre-production deployment. Uh, my Amazon uh, application is stored in Amazon S3. You can select the uh, file that uh, we copied before. It's in Amazon S3, S3 dash forward forward my build artifacts, my donkey app deliveries is the folder, my donkey app, this is the zip file that we created. So mind you, I'm in Sydney region and this bucket is also in Sydney region. So all looks good. Uh, you can keep all the other things as default. Uh, develop uh, deployment overrides, you can see one at a time. Additional deployments, we don't need anything to set up here. Rollback configuration also, I leave it as default. So create the deployment. In this case, it's going to create uh, two deployments. So if you go to deployments and then select the latest deployment, you can find that uh, two instances are going to be updated. So one instance has already been deployed. You can find that it's successful. And in a while, the other deployment is also will successfully deployed. So I'm in the, this installation. So both got executed successfully and the deployment uh, after a while will mark as successful. So if I go into my uh, development machine, so this is my uh, development machine. Uh, you can find on the temp data, my donkey app, uh, my PowerShell generated file. So this file already exists and that's why uh, it added this hello world from one because I executed it multiple times. And if you go into your build machine, under the temp folder it has created my donkey app again. And you can find that my PowerShell generated file. So you can find that it has already been uh, deployed.